From Harvard comes a study, according to the research at the uh, T.H. Chan School of Public Health, that the more walnuts you consume, both in terms of the amount and frequency, it's associated with a lower risk of death and an increased life expectancy, especially if you're older, compared to those who did not consume walnuts. Quote, what we've learned from this study is that even a few handfuls of walnuts per week may help promote longevity, especially among those whose diet quality isn't great to begin with. It's a practical tip that can be feasible for a number of people who are looking to improve their health, which is, which is top of mind for many people, end quote. And this was published in the Peer Review Journal Nutrients. And they found that just five or more servings, and by the way, a serving is just one ounce of nuts. One ounce. That's a tiny amount that would fit into a spoon. All right? So throw a handful into your smoothie in the morning, and it would be terrific. And they had a 25% lower risk of dying from cardiovascular disease. And they gained about 1.3 years of life expectancy just from consuming walnuts. Well, what about consuming berries? And what about going on a healthy plant-based diet? And what about, and what about, and what about? It all increases because everything in life is cumulative. So, that's good news. Also, pregnant women need higher vitamin D. According to the newest studies, they found that giving just 400 units a day is not enough. I believe it should be 1,000 to 2,000 units a day. And uh, that's what their study has shown here. But also I found that it's, <clears throat> it's long been believed that advancing age leads to broad declines in our mental abilities. Now new research from Georgetown University Medical Center offers surprisingly good news, by countering this view. The findings published in the current issue of Nature Human Behavior, a major peer review journal, shows that two key brain functions, which allow us to attend to new information and to focus on what's important in a given situation, can in fact improve in older individuals. These functions underlie critical aspects of cognition, such as memory, decision-making, and self-control, even navigation and math and language and reading. So these results are amazing and have important consequences. So people have widely assumed that attention and executive function decline with age. But that's not true. You can actually improve and grow. So that's important. All right? So just remember, keep your mind active. I was thinking about this this morning. Oh, and by the way, I, I posted up on GaryNall.com. Someone had asked, uh, they hear that I get up early in the morning, I go out and feed the animals and take care of them. Same thing at night. What, what exactly do I feed animals? So I made up some plates, what I normally do every morning for the peacocks, and I just took a picture. Uh, me with the food. And it's interesting because someone says, gee, most Americans don't eat that uh, healthy a breakfast. I had blueberries and raw uh, peanuts. I had what is called scratch, which is three rough raw grains, and also uh, organic lettuce, all diced up. I had grapes, three different types of grapes, and that I cut in half if they're too large. I also put in there uh, corn that I cut, fresh organic corn, and give them corn. And then I give them other things like I'll take Ezekiel bread, a sprout bread that's gluten-free and wheat-free, actually, and I dice it very finely, and I give them a bunch of that. That's really good for them. And then I make sure that they have a full variety of other chopped-up fruits. So they eat a huge tray, and they eat twice a day. And mind you, this is in addition to them going out and, and eating the bugs in the, in the fields, which they do. And what I've noticed is that the, their feathers, uh, their health, their longevity, 
So normally, I can substantially increase the life expectancy of an animal. For example, until um, uh, some, unfortunately, and those people are no longer employed here, um, they gave some, did some stupid things. I won't go into it. You know, that caused some animals to die. And one of them was the oldest known ring-tailed lemur in the world. She was 33 years old. The normal lifespan is about half that. So she was about 200 years, just as healthy as she can be, friendly, and she was the matriarch of the whole place. And uh, that was all based upon the diet. And the same true for some dogs. Sprout now is 19, but I had one at 24 and one at 26. Sally, 26, the cat. And so it makes a big difference in the animals, what you feed them. But also what makes a big importance is, and humans don't appreciate this, it is called enhanced environment. What that means is, especially when you have intelligent animals like primates, you have to constantly be offering them something within their environment that challenges them. And they'll just be methodical about it. For example, if you take some nuts and fruits and you put it in pockets and then zip up the pockets and tie the whole shirt or pants in knots, they'll sit there for hours and methodically undo all that. And then when they get to the pocket and they open up and suddenly there's some nuts, they laugh. You know, they, they, they find that a lot of fun. And then changing the music throughout the day and showing them videos and cartoons. And they'll tell you which ones they like and which they don't like and bring that enhancement and playing with them. You know, they, they love that. Why should a human being any different? One of the things that makes life so wonderful is that we have a nation just overwhelmingly loving, and yet people walk around as if there's not a good thing to say about anyone, that everybody's bad and everybody's toxic. No, there are bad and toxic people in this world and in this country, absolutely. But they're not the majority, nowhere near it. Beautiful places to go. That's why I'm recommending, if you can afford it, an RV for the future. It allows you to get from place to place if you can't be in one place because of mandates. But why shouldn't we have the same idea, waking up each day and having our environment enhanced? Reading some nonfiction, learning about life in different ways, learning new language, use of words, expanding our vocabulary, looking deeper at issues, staying away from just emotionally relating to an issue, and seeing if you can unpack that issue on philosophical levels. So, just think about it today, what you could put into your day that allows it to be more enriched. Curcumin prevents peripheral organ dysfunction in Alzheimer's. This is from Central Michigan University, and we all know that the clinical progression of Alzheimer's disease, which is a central nervous system disorder, is closely linked with peripheral organ dysfunction. And so curcumin and the components of curcumin were able to interfere in that. The deposition of what we called amyloid, A-M-Y-L-O-I-D, amyloid, beta, B-E-T-A, plaques, and neuro, N-E-U-R-O, fibrillary, F-I-B-R-I-L-L-A-R, Tangles. Just imagine you are taking the hair out of your brush and it's all kind of interwoven together, a little knotty, uh, and you can pull it apart. By the way, it's not bad to do that each day to count how many hairs you've lost in your shower and, uh, and also in your brush. Take them, put them on the table. It's completely normal to lose between 40 to 100 hairs a day. If you start getting more than that, that's a problem. But people some, suddenly sometimes freak out if they have you know 10 or 15 hairs after a shampoo. That's completely normal. And there's a lot we can do to keep our hair. Folic acid, biotin by itself at a higher dose of both uh, is important. But there are other things we can do. In any case, in your brain, when you have been eating a poor diet and having alcohol, or exposed to environmental toxins or stress, you end up with these neurofibrillary tangles. They're the hallmark of pathologies of Alzheimer's. And so they turn on inflammation. 
and the inflammation then disrupts the immune system, and that's where curcumin comes in. It's strongly anti-inflammatory, and it's immune modulating. So it really helps the body and helps those with Alzheimer's. Also, what we know is this. You do not want your circadian, circadian, C-I-R, C-A-D-I-A-N, rhythm, disruption. It adversely affects the physiology and behavior of our body and can be implicated as one of the problems leading to Alzheimer's disease pathology. So our body is tuned to function in a, in a manner that is in sync. We call it the circadian or day and night rhythm. Alterations to daily lifestyle like working night shifts, staying up too late, sleeping throughout the day, that will all create a current stressful routine and then that disrupts the body's day and night cycle for longer periods. And recent studies have shown in laboratories that even chronic light exposure at night having some light on in the room, even background light, can disrupt the circadian rhythm and cause memory deficit seen in neurological disorders like Alzheimer's. And uh, we have more reporting of people having a circadian rhythm and not being able to sleep in Alzheimer's than almost any other condition. So just remember, don't eat within three hours going to bed. If you need something to help you, take some melatonin, one, two milligrams, about a half hour, hour before. Take some magnesium, maybe 500 milligrams before you go to bed, and calcium. Turn off all the light and unplug all the plugs. Unplug everything. Turning off a computer doesn't disconnect the electromagnetic pulses. It just eliminates the monitor being on. Wherever you see blue light, turn off the blue lights. And then put in some earplugs if there's noise, and just wear some kind of soft velvet patch over your eyes if you need that. And watch how much better your good night's sleep is. And that can help in time to crack your biorhythms. And finally, from Vit University in India, the neuroprotective potential of carotenoids. Now, when you have carrots, carrot juice, you're getting carotenoids. But that's true of almost all the fruits and vegetables. So the more of these carotenoids you have in your system, more fruits and vegetables, the greater the reduction in neurodegenerative diseases, the pathologies of these. So that's one of the ways we can help our brain and our nervous system. I'm talking about Huntington's, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, amyloid, trophic lateral sclerosis, and stroke. The carotenoids are therapeutic molecules to target neurodegenerative diseases. And that's why really having a lot of lycopene and B-carotene and crocin and crocetin and lutein and astaxanthin, these are all great for your eyes, for your vision. They turn on inflammation throughout your whole body, but especially in the brain. Oh, and by the way, from... Zijing University in China, they studied 400,000 people and they found those who consumed the most berries and the anthocyanins in the berries reduced the risk of type 2 diabetes by up to 18%. Eat your berries. A bowl of berries a day helps keep diabetes away. That's the latest on health and healing, all from peer-reviewed literature.